Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we are gonna be working on this super creepy mask from the Black Phone. That's right, this is the Grabber Mask. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of horror movies. I love them. I really dug this one. And I thought this mask was just super creepy. Now, if you're interested in printing out your own mask like this, you can head over to my site, 3dprintedprops.com, where you can pick it up with all the faces, all the different bottom parts, the frown, the, the blank, the smile, or you can pick up just the top or just the smile. It all depends. He had some different looks, so you can pick up what you want. And of course, at the end of the video, I'll have all the things I used to make it look so super creepy. Now, the other thing I'm going to be doing with the Grabber character is a full cosplay. Now, the first cosplay I did was way back in the beginning of the channel, and it was with my uh, Red Hood. And it was super fun, and I loved sourcing everything. So I decided that on the channel, I'm going to have some more cosplays, because I really enjoy the research, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then finding the stuff and weathering it and doing everything I need to do. So this will be one of the first ones we're going to be doing. It's going to be the grabber. And those are going to be some uh, some next videos we'll be showing where I find, you know, the different clothes and the hat and glasses until we put together a full cosplay that I think I'll be wearing to the New York Comic Con this year. I'll be there on Saturday. So if you see a super creepy grabber, it's going to be me. All right, guys, let's get behind the fake wall and get started. So I printed this mask out in resin because I was testing out a new printer. You'll see that video later. But of course you can print it out in, you know, PLA, PETG, whatever you want. And the great thing about all the texture in this is if you do use PLA, it's going to, you know, any of the layer lines are really going to get hidden. Now, even though this is resin, we do need to give it a little bit of sanding. And this is just a 320 to knock some of it down. And I actually went over the whole helmet just for the heck of it. Make sure you wear a mask. You see how, you know, just fine that is. Wash it down with soap and water. And then I just primed it. And I didn't even bother sanding the primer again because I want that sort of rough look to it. And then we're going to go over with just some cheap acrylics and, again, links below. Now, I went ahead and used my favorite ivory color. Uh, you know, the mask is really only shown in, like, a lot of dark areas. A little bit here and there, maybe a little bit lighter. But I'm just using a chip brush because I want it to be rough. And even I'm leaving that, like piece of the brush that went on it, the one of the bristles, because I'm thinking of this as something that he actually made. Uh, it seems very important to him. And, you know, it's something that like, he didn't just go out and buy, he, he crafted these things. So if they look a little rough, that's okay. Now, I'm a little impatient. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a hairdryer. I'm looking at my reference. Yes, I'm out of color ink. And I'm sort of noting where there's some different discolorations and what color they are. Now I'm going to use this Vallejo wash. I'm really loving this stuff because it just, how it sort of stains and then seeps into the crevices, uh, you know, you've got to pay for it other than, of course, just making your own wash, which you can do with just cheap acrylics and water. But I really like how this stuff goes on. And I like how it sort of stains the area, but it's easy to wipe away. I don't know. I'm really liking it. It's not that uh, pricey. I can't remember how much it is, um, but it's maybe like 6 or $7. And I really like it. Now, here's where we're going to start building up some layers here. Now, you're wiping it. Yes, we're padding and blotting. But now if I wipe hard with a paper towel, you can see how we're getting different layers in there. Where, you know, he might be holding it you wipe down to the original color, that, you know, sort of um, bone color, and it gives it this modeled approach, this, this sort of blending of the colors. So it doesn't just like, you know, you just th threw a bunch of paint on it. Um, this thing is aged, it's been worn. Uh, I'm just blotting away. I'm trying to leave it in the cracks and crevices. Someone pointed out, that uh, there could be a drinking game, how many times I say cracks and crevices when uh, I'm talking about weathering something, so I'm going to intentionally try not to say it. So, because um, I realize I probably say it way too much. But uh, I am doing that. I'm keeping it in some of the areas, the recessed areas, and I'm wiping it away uh, a little harder in areas that would get actually uh, the dirt uh, sort of scoured off him, like maybe the nose where he grabs on, or an area on the horn, how he takes it off all the time. Uh, you're telling a story with your weathering, and that's the best part of any prop for me. 
So I noticed it had eyebrows. Uh, I'm putting these on, and you're probably saying, too, man, they look a little dark. Uh, I've watched the movie several times, and I don't remember seeing them that dark. And you're right. Uh, I put it on way, way too thick here. He even had, it had some black around the mouth, which I love. And I'm kind of dry brushing this. There's a little bit more on there than probably you would for dry brushing. But I'm not, you know, soaking it in there. You can see it still looks mottled. And we're going to fix this. You can also see on the teeth, I did a lot of wiping with a paper towel to make them look a little bit whiter to sort of give the mask a little bit of a depth to it. Now, what I'm doing to fix the, all these areas is I'm going over this, sort of dry brushing it with just that original ivory color, just to knock those back a bit. So it's, you know, not so pronounced. You can see it on the lips there. Now I'm taking some acrylic, just straight acrylic, not watered down or anything, with a fine brush, and I'm going to go over all of these cracks to make them look more pronounced. Now, I did notice in the mask that there's kind of some rust-colored areas on it, so I'm just mixing up some burnt sienna uh, and sort of just dry brushing it on, and it gives helps. I think it helps gives the mask a little bit more depth, a little bit more modeling, and there was one down on the chin that I noticed uh, and marked in my reference, and I, you know, I'm pretty happy in the end how the, the, the black turned out, the lips turned out, this rust color. It looks super creepy. Thing is, how are we going to keep it all together? You can actually buy this all in one piece if you want with all the different bottom parts, the expressions. But we're going to use some magnets, some tiny magnets. I love this company, K&J. And we're going to use some, a drill here to put these holes in. Links below. Now, I'm using a drill bit that's used for plastics. I find it doesn't bite really hard. It doesn't cause chipping. Uh, I really love them. And I'm just going ahead and adding some holes and putting these tiny magnets in. Now, it doesn't really fit that well, so I'm going to have to go back and do it again. Now... I'm also going to use my epoxy sculpt. I love this stuff. Uh, you mix it one-to-one, -one, wear gloves, because it is a chemical. You know, it's a chemical compound, or it could be toxic. And we're going to go ahead and plug the holes and put our magnets in. Now, you don't want to push those too, too far down. It might look like I am, because um, I, it looks like I am. But uh, it's actually not fitting in there perfectly, which is good, actually, because it's not flush. You don't want it flush, because remember, these magnets have to touch. So I'm going to just go ahead and push these things in. Now, I only put one in each sort of edge here. You know, if I was going to do it again, and I probably actually will before Comic-Con, uh, I'll probably actually put you know, more magnets in to help hold it together a little bit more. But actually, and Comic-Con, I'm probably going to just wear the bottom part. Now, I'm adding another magnet to the nose. And I can I noticed here that they weren't lining up perfectly. It looks great when you're wearing it, but the insides just don't line up that well. So I'm adding a little line there. And now I'm going to test the magnet out. I want to make sure I know which side sticks and have that facing out. So I carved a little area in there and now when I put this magnet on, it will line up with the magnets in the bottom. And now it's just a matter of just adding all these magnets in to this putty, uh, making, again, sure they're a little proud, maybe they stand out a little bit so that they can touch the other magnet. Now, I also had a little bit of an issue with, I needed something to rest on my forehead more to sort of keep it on, so I used some padding. And I'll actually change that out later on. Now, for the straps, I noticed in a behind-the-scenes clip, they are leather. So I found this leather belt at a thrift shop, and I went ahead and picked it up for a whole 99 cents. And again, I wanted this to be, you know, like he built this himself, and he just used an old belt. Now, I'm glad I kept this extra area, because I needed it. If I <laughs> And we're going to save that. Who knows? Might need it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the foam in. Later in the video, you'll notice I actually had ripped this thing out and put a thinner piece in. This is actually a little too bulky, but, you know, the same, uh, the same idea. Now, I'm going to go ahead and score this uh, belt up because uh, I want to make sure that the hot glue sort of gets in there and it isn't maybe like just sticks to the, the finished side. And I push it in here and make sure it sits nice and flat. I score up the other side and give it some glue. Now, here's the thing. I needed a little bit of elasticity to this. So when I put it on, it, it, I didn't have to have a perfect fit. So I cut a piece of elastic and I hot glued that on to the end of that, let it dry, 
And then I attached the elastic to the back of the helmet. Now, yes, that is actually was quite hot <laughs> when I touched my glove on that. And uh, I know this is going to take some abuse, so I went ahead and made sure I really gooped it on. And now you can notice I get a little bit of play there. So when I put it on, it's got some elasticity to it. Now, I won't bore you. It took me a while to figure out the proper angle to put this piece on so that it fit well. You can see I marked it there with a pencil and then I went ahead and glued it. But things like this, when you're working on them, they take a little time. You got to take them off, put them back on, uh, you know, maybe add a few pieces here or there, like here. The eyes kind of poked into my uh, sort of eye socket a little bit, even with the foam, so I'm just taking them back a little bit. Now I've had some people print this and said they've had no issues with this. It all depends. And there it is with the backing on it. Super happy with how this guy came out. Super, super creepy, right? Yes, he totally agrees. So there you go. Putting it all together, improvising when you have to. <laughs> the belt from the dollar store. And again, you can wear this either way you want. You can have it where it's, I should probably take my glasses off, where it's just a smile like this. Okay. Or you can put the top on and line those magnets up. And boom, you've got the mask. And you got a little bit of a gap here, but he had a little bit of a gap in the mask and the movie. And actually, if I go ahead and fit it a little bit better, I don't have a mirror, so I can't tell. There we go. Boom. Super creepy. I love this thing. I love how it turned out. And again, you can buy it in just this iteration uh, because this was one of the looks he had. Whew. So there you go, the grabber mask. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Uh, hit the little uh, bell if you want to see some of the next videos are going to be coming out for this uh, where we're going to be doing a full cosplay. And I'm super, super excited about that. So thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day.